So in, with regards to changing your lifestyle and self-planning, you need to think about clarifying your reasons for exercise. What is it that you really want to accomplish? Is this really a goal? If you can't, if you can't really get past that, then you're, you're not past the pre-contemplation stage. It can't be my goal. It can't be somebody else's goal for you. It's something that you want to accomplish. You have to really have a desire and a need. Okay? You also have to identify what specific needs you have. What is it you're trying to accomplish? If it's body comp, if it's body fat, okay, well, how am I going to accomplish that? What am I going to do specifically? And we're going to be talking about that in a few minutes. Set your personal goals. Write out your plan. And writing it down is just a way of keeping yourself honest and committed. And then evaluate your progress. And we're going to go through each of these steps in the next few minutes. And, and, and as I go through, if you have any questions or concerns or, or comments, don't hesitate to, to speak up because certainly we have time for that. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide and talk a little bit about clarifying reasons. What, what is it you're wanting to accomplish and why? Why do you think you want to be active? Why, why do you think you want to be more fit? Um, the reasons that you give will reflect uh, why you would like, like why, why you're going to want to be involved, why you want to get past the pre-contemplation stage. Um, some of the reasons that have been given, maybe I want to feel better, have more energy. Uh, there's also the social benefits. I'm going to look better. I'm going to have some more self-confidence, more self-efficacy. Uh, these are reasons. They're not goals. These are, these are motivating factors. These are things that you're saying, well, you know, what, what, what makes me want to go past that predisposing, what, that first stage, that pre-contemplation? Why, why do I want to move up into eventually maintenance? Uh, reasons are important. Think about what you're really wanting to accomplish and why. Let's go to that next slide. Then identify the needs. Of the five health-related components of fitness, and we're going to be looking at those, but I'll say them really quickly. There's cardiovascular, which is the most important because that's the one that can kill you. Uh, the body comp, the muscular strength, muscular endurance, and the flexibility. Which of those five, or maybe it's all five, are you going to want to improve in? And again, make sure you have reasons. If you don't have the reasons, then you really are not going to identify the needs very well. So you start with the reasons, then you go to the needs. Specifically, what are my needs? I would like to improve my flexibility. Well, the reason we imp improve flexibility is because we want to improve our performance and prevent injury. You know, that would be a good reason to, to improve your flexibility. Maybe your body comp is where it needs to be. Maybe your cardiovascular. I want to improve my heart. My, I have a genetic predisposition towards uh, uh, heart failure in my family. I want to live a longer life and a better quality of life. There's a lot of different reasons to improve your, your cardiovascular. So you, you start thinking about um, that as a need and specifically looking at the reasons that you have. Then you can de better develop the idea of what needs you have. The next slide after you get past that is specifically which of these five health related components are you going to work on it it might again be all five you've developed some reasons you've developed some needs now which of these five are you going to be able to commit to because we're going to be looking at that in just a few minutes go ahead and go to the next slide um, setting these personal goals goal setting <clears throat> when we're talking about goal setting you should think about behavioral goals as well as outcome goals Behavioral goals, uh, uh, process-oriented goals, uh, performance-related goals. This is how you get to the outcome-related goal. I'll give you an example. Um, I want to be able to have my weight down to, this was my goal for the end of summer. I wanted to be down to 240. I was up to 310 uh, in the middle of the spring. That's, I've never been that heavy, even as a uh, football player. And I thought, you know, that's way too heavy, and I need to lose several pant sizes and I need to get my weight down where I'm more comfortable and I look better so I can do my job and be a better role model for other faculty and students. So um, I started thinking about, well, okay, my outcome goal is to get my weight down to 240 by the beginning of the fall semester. I was able, actually able to meet, reach my goal. Uh, what behavioral performance process oriented goals am I going to put in place to make that happen? Well, what are some things that you would do in order to lose weight? You tell me. What's that? Eat less. All right, eat less, okay. Push away from the table a little bit faster, okay. Eat the right foods, not, you know. And, and you know, I honestly have actually been able to, and I've, I've, I've worked on this my whole life, but I've never been able to do it before. I actually like steamed vegetables now. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of enjoy eating those. So that's a good thing. Um, still like eating some of those other things too, like hot fudge sundaes. Still kind of crave that once in a while. Uh, so eat the right foods, eat the right amount of food, exercise, not only exercise, but the right kind of exercise. I think what I'm going to say about exercise is going to surprise you as we talk about staying fit. 
Um, and then um, maybe changing your lifestyle. Maybe looking at your routine and thinking about on a daily basis, what do I do and what don't I do? And what should I change in order to maintain and not just retain? Not just to get to where I want to be, but also to stay to where I need to be. So those are goal setting, and, and we call them SMART goals. As we look at behavioral outcome goals, they're SMART goals. They're specific. Don't just say, I want to lose weight. Don't just say, I want to have a stronger heart. Don't just say, I want to be more flexible. Hold, make it measurable. Make it specific where you can hold yourself accountable to a behavioral goal. I'm going to go out three times a week. Well, honestly, this summer I went out five times at least a week and biked 12 miles a day. Uh, at 15 to 20 miles per hour. That's pretty specific and that's pretty measurable. Okay, that's what it took for me to lose as much weight as I needed to. Uh, I was very careful about what I ate, how much I ate, like drank plenty of water. Uh, I, I tried to lose weight the right way. They say, you know, maybe a pound and a half at the most a week, depending on who you are. For me, I could actually lose two and a half because I weighed so much, I, I could, had more to lose. Most people, you know, a pound and a half a week's a lot. Um, you, lose, you lose gradually over a long period of time you're better off. And then once you get to that place, change your lifestyle where you're eating the right foods, the right amount of foods, and exercising appropriately, and you're going to be better off. So make it attainable, make it realistic, and make it timely. Okay, I want to be able to see a difference by the fall semester. I needed that for confidence, for efficacy, for esteem. I need to be able to see a difference. I need to be able to measure a difference um, throughout that period of time on a weekly basis. Well, how do you measure body comp? Most of us don't have skin calipers. None of us have an underwater weighing tank. Those are ways in which we figure out how much body comp we have, how much fat we have in our body. So what do we do? We get on a scale. Okay? Now, I know that's not a true measurement of body comp, but it does tell us something. It does, it does give us a measurement. It can, it can lend itself to confidence and efficacy and esteem. It can lend itself to, to reinforcing the right thing. So if you're working about body comp, I know that the scale doesn't measure body comp, but it does measure weight, and it's probably a pretty valid and reliable measurement of what your body's doing. And some of y'all, like me, have lost a lot of weight over, you know, the last year. And you're really concerned about keeping it off now. And you should be, because old habits die hard. And the habits that we had for many, many years was to eat as much as we wanted and maybe not exercise nearly as much as we should have. So what do we do about that? Well. We make SMART goals to maintain, not just to obtain, but to maintain. We make SMART goals, goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Uh, here's some guidelines that we should look at then in setting these SMART goals. First of all, set the SMART goals, then focus specifically on what exercise you want to do. I'm going to suggest to you the best exercise is one that you're going to want to do. For you, it's strength training. For you, it's swimming. For you, it might be walking. But you know what, the best exercise is the one you're going to want to do and probably the one that's specific to what you want to accomplish, going back to reasons, what you're trying to do. Mine was body comp. I have to lose body weight. I have to drop 70 pounds. I've never weighed that much. This is ridiculous for me to weigh this much. And how did that happen? One day at a time? You know, just maybe a few calories too much over a long period of time adds up to 3,500 calories pretty quickly. And over a period of a year, we're going to be looking at this in a few minutes, 10 pounds a year over a period of seven years, and that's how long I've been at Missouri Baptist, 70 pounds. Okay, so that's how it happens, a little at a time. You know, God made us though where we can lose it fairly quickly. And I was able to lose it in a period of four or five months, I was able to lose that weight because I exercise a lot more than I would normally would. But now I've got to maintain. How do you maintain? Well, I'm not going to maintain by doing something I don't like. I, I really don't like swimming. I'm sorry. I don't enjoy swimming. I, I get my head down the water and I, I think I'm, I'm going to drown. I, 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 can, I can swim, but I don't enjoy it, okay? I, I like walking. I, I did race walking with some colleagues at Liberty University for, for years, and, and I was actually sore. I was running, but walking used different muscles. That was kind of weird. But walking is a great exercise. It's lower impact than running, and, and I, I really enjoyed the fellowship with my two brothers in Christ. But I needed something that really got my heart rate even higher than even race walking. I couldn't run any longer. You, you get to an age where it's not good to do a lot of high impact activities, so running wasn't good. That's really the best carb, uh, calorie burner is, is running. Okay? If you're able and your body is built in such a way where you can, running, jogging, walking, all of those are very good uh, calorie burners. 
but I can't, I can't do those kinds of things. So I'm thinking biking would be good. And I live in Lake St. Louis and I'm able to bike around a three mile circuit around Lake St. Louis in a circle. And I was able to do that four times, 12 miles. And if I had bike problems or if my body just collapsed, then I could crawl home, you know, and uh, get in the jacuzzi or something and try to recover. So, you know, that, was re that really worked well for me. Find something that you like, something that's convenient, something that, that is, is going to be possible for you to do on a regular basis that you can work into your routine. Now, what's the downside of biking this time of year and maybe as we get into winter? The weather, okay, it's turning cold. This morning it was 45 degrees in Lake St. Louis. I'm not getting on a bike, okay, it's not gonna happen. I promised myself I would. I even put a light on my bike, on my, a little light so I would be able to bike in the dark which worked really well in the summer, but not so good when it turns to fall and winter, okay? Because I'm not getting out there in the snow. It's just not gonna happen. So you have to have a plan B. You say, okay, I still kind of enjoy biking. I can live with biking. Uh, I'm gonna go indoors and have a place where you can go if that's what you wanna do in a stationary bike until you can go back outdoors again. And you know how the weather is in St. Louis. It'll, if you just wait a day, it'll change. If you didn't like it, it it'll be different the next day. So you go back out and then after you finish the cold weather, you can go back out in the spring and the summer and go biking again and your body's gonna stay in shape and you've maintained. So find the exercise that you enjoy and find the one that's most relevant to what you wanna accomplish. And if you look at one of the handouts that I've given you, I think it's on the second page, uh, the back of the first page, it's page two. There's a chart here describing different activities, how much you weigh, just go across the table there and look how much you weigh and look at the amount of calories that you can burn per hour. Now I put this is because I'm thinking a lot of us are concerned about weight. Okay, now if I'm wrong there, then forget this because I'm talking about one of the health related components of fitness that we can look at and consider. And this is what I would look at. And I'm looking right here and I'm thinking, okay, um, what are some things that I, well, there's hiking. A hiking for me would be 375 pounds in, 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 in an in an hour, that's pretty good. Hiking would probably be good for me. Uh, but if I want to burn calories, jump roping. Well, that would be really good, 875 calories. Well, of course, that's high impact, so that's not going to work for me. Um, weight training, you know, circuit training, as mentioned by Mr. Danoff, that's 558 calories. Well, that's, again, that number, don't let that deceive you. That's not getting on a weight machine and lifting uh, three sets of 12 reps. That's getting on a machine and moving to the next one fairly quickly so your heart rate's sustained. Uh, you can look on here and, and look at the ones that's of most interest to you. And you see biking, it's kind of hard to see. It's darkened out a little bit there. But you can see it's not the highest as far as calorie count, but it's, it's pretty good. And if you do it at 15, 20 miles per hour for 12 miles a day, trust me, it, it's functional. Yes, sir. Ballet, yeah, I tell you what, guy, you and I both can get involved in that, okay? You first. I want to see you in one of those little, um, what are those things that you wear? As soon as you get one, I'll get one. All right. So, you know, think about setting smart goals. Focus on what exercise you want to do. Uh, think about your genetic predisposition. Think about how you're going to maintain once you do it, or how you're going to maintain it. Uh, think about not setting just a specific goal only for what you want to accomplish at the end of the summer or into the winter. And the winter months are terrible. I mean, they're hard. What do you want to be at the end of winter? But also, how are you going to maintain this for a lifetime? What is, how is your life going to be changed here? That's really what we're talking about is a lifestyle change if we're going to maintain it. Okay? And then uh, putting your goals down and, and putting it into in, in action.